Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here of Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Happy to be having our live spirit session, our live spirit chat again today. And this is really an opportunity for you all to participate in a group coaching session, to get a mini coaching session in regards to your spiritual development, your spiritual path, developing your spiritual practice, developing your psychic abilities, and all things related. Hi, thanks for joining. You all are so on time today. I'm just gonna burn a little herbs, settle in here, wait for a few more people to join. Sorry about that. There we go. <clears throat> for those of you who have not participated before, this is a chance to get your questions answered regarding developing your spiritual path, developing your psychic abilities, developing your spiritual gifts, learning to tune into and trust your intuition, working with spirit guides, practicing folk magic, practicing candle magic, and all kinds of things related and in between. Divination, tarot, dream work, and all kinds of related things. So I'm happy to take your questions and to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for joining. You just happened to come home early and you almost forgot, but you're here. Thank you. I'm gonna give, um, give this a moment for more people to join and for you all to start, start in with your questions. And I'm gonna burn some Herba Santa. I hope you're all doing well today. Happy holiday week for those of you who are in the U.S. or Canada. Um, holidays tend to get really busy for me, holidays and weekends, because you all, everybody else is off. And so that means that everyone has extra time to contact me and to sit down and um, think about things. So. That means that I get a, a bit busier than usual during weekends and holidays when everyone else has time off. Which is totally, you know, understandable and normal. Makes complete sense when you have time to actually um, sit down and clear your mind and think about what your goals and your intentions are and think about what kind of assistance and guidance you may need. And I would prefer that you do it during a time when you have that extra time to clear your mind and really think things through clearly and write to me, you know, in depth about your situation. I see I'm getting some questions and I'll start jumping in with those in just a moment. I did also have a couple of things that I wanted to talk about um, based on some prior questions that I received. Thanks for joining everybody. Okay. I'm drinking some medicinal herbal tea in case you're wondering why I'm drinking it out of a giant jar. <laughs> it's because it needs to be measured out. Okay, looks like the first question I'm getting is how often do I meditate to tune into my psychic abilities? So the answer to that is when you're really seriously working on developing and you want to um, consciously make some progress, then you need to be working on that intensively every day or as often as possible. Um, in the past, something that I would often do is work on it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes every day and then take at least one day out of the week where I'm doing more intensive um, meditations or energy work or practices that take like 45 to 60 minutes. Um, I've also had lengthy periods of time where I am meditating for up to an hour or so every day. And if it's not meditation, then it's some form of energy work or actually 
practicing my abilities or practicing tuning into my abilities. So I do think that um, there's a fine line between meditation and energy work and visualizations and things of that nature. And sometimes it's helpful to distinguish between them, but you don't always have to. Um, now though, so I do shorter meditations as often as possible, every day if possible, at least three to, three, three to four times a week, and then a, a day where I'm doing a longer, more intensive meditation. But I also have, um, and, and this will happen for you and this will happen for anybody who practices this and works on this over time, you develop systems that work well for you where you can um, work on things in a small amount of time as you're going about your daily life or like little um, tricks that you can use to center your mind or um, change your perspective or get more spiritually in tune in a fast in a quick amount of time while you're going about your daily life. So for example, there are different things that I do um, right before I start a reading or during a reading. There are exercises that I practice if I'm in a situation where I start to feel that I'm being too affected by the energy of other people around me or the energy or stress of a situation. Um, there are things that I practice quickly in the moment if I want to be more connected to someone that I'm talking to or if I want to or need to be more connected to spirit. And most of what I'm talking about is energy work that once you practice it, you can accomplish it very smoothly and very quickly without thinking too much about it while you're going about your other activities. And a lot of this is involved with, with the chakras, but also your, um, your energetic or your auric field. So I hope that makes sense. And if you have any um, follow-up questions about that, I'm happy to answer those as well. Okay, so how do we start to work with our ancestors? Like, what is the starting point? The starting point is setting up an ancestor altar. In the beginning, your ancestor altar, most, many traditions recommend that your ancestor altar should be completely covered in white. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything super special. You don't have to buy a special table. You don't even necessarily have to clear an extra space as long as you have an area that you are dedicating to them. You can even put it on the floor. You can put it on the floor even with just like a white handkerchief or something like that or nothing if you don't have anything. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. But if you use any colors or any fabrics or anything like that, then it should be white as much as possible. One single white candle, fresh water, um, spring water if you can get it, or blessed water if you can get it. That's it. There doesn't have to be much else. It is usually recommended you do not start offering them food or anything elaborate in the beginning. The reason behind this is because you need to to establish a strong connection with them first before giving them elaborate offerings. You want to make sure your offerings are going to the right place. You want to make sure that they are, that they are accepting your offerings and that that connection is there strong and stable. Um, I can go into that a little bit more if you have follow-up questions, but the other part of this is you just start praying to them. Just start praying to them every day. Try to do it at the same time every day in the same place. Consistency in this kind of work is really important. When you set up a routine or a schedule, the results that you will receive will be much stronger. So pray to them from your heart every day. The basic premise of the prayer should be you are offering them gratitude. You are thanking them for everything they've done before you. You're thanking them for the path that they have carved out. You're thanking them for the things that they have given you that you aren't even aware of. You're thanking them for the unique strengths and characteristics that they have passed on to you. You're thanking them for the wisdom they have passed on to you. You're thanking them for everything you have inherited from them in your, your cellular memory, in your DNA memory. And you are not asking them for anything. So you give them their, their very simple offerings, fresh water, a candle, make sure their altar is clean and nice, pray to them with gratitude, and then you can talk to them after your prayers are over. You can just talk to them about your life, but you shouldn't be asking them for anything. Um, 
And then this can take a long time. For some people, it takes like a year before you feel like your relationship has progressed and you really have a strong, steady connection. And at that point, and you will know intuitively if you're really practicing this consistently and you're getting in tune with this, you will know intuitively when it's time to take that practice to another level. And then you can start asking them for, for guidance. Um, and I recommend that you don't really ask for specific things like, hey, can you um, screw up this enemy's life or can you get me a new car? I recommend that you kind of refrain from stuff like that and instead you ask for guidance, you ask for wisdom and you ask for assistance with being open to receiving their guidance, their messages, their signs that they will send you because our prayers are always answered whether we know it or we are aware of it or not. Many times it's just... Um, it's the interpretation that needs some tweaking. It's either that we're not stopping and spending enough time to listen for the answers or feel the answers or see the answers, or we don't know how to interpret the signs and the messages that we're receiving. Maybe we're not even paying attention and we don't notice the signs or we don't know how to interpret them. So asking them to actually assist you with being open to their signs, their messages and their guidance will will take you a long way. That's a, a very helpful thing to work on with them. And then of course, um, anytime you wanna deepen anything like this, any connection like this or any work like this, then it's extremely helpful to be working on developing yourself as well, like a meditation um, ritual or a meditation practice or working on developing your psychic abilities or your spiritual gifts, just working on being really in tune with yourself, in tune with your spiritual connection and you know, having self-awareness, things of that nature are really going to help to take a practice like this or a relationship like this further faster. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Hey, catch these empath vibes, welcome. Yeah, I put an effect on this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Hi, Ventura Destiny. Hi, Miss Melinda, how you doing? Doing good. Um, this coming Wednesday, 1121, it would be my birthday. Please send me some good energy. Yeah, no problem. I'll send you the good energy right now. Happy birthday. I hope you have a great one. I hope that you receive all the blessings that you deserve. If you're looking for some kind of guidance, some kind of sign, I hope that you receive that. I encourage you to be open to receiving it, to pay close attention and look for it. And if you have asked for it, then it's coming to you. So happy birthday. Catch these empath vibes. How long did it take for you to develop a relationship with my spirit guide? Well, which one? Um, so I have, so there's different kinds of spirit guides and in, um, in one of the belief systems that resonates with me, there is what's called a high level spirit guide. And a high level spirit guide is a guide who um, has never been incarnated, has never been a human. They are living in, you know, on a different spiritual dimension. They're living in a different dimension and they have jobs that they choose typically. Sometimes they're assigned, but many times they choose these jobs. And the point being, they are assigned to individual humans and it's their job to, um, to help us. They are dedicated to helping us with our spiritual evolution and our personal growth and development. Connecting with that guide took me several months of intensive work. That was one of those periods where I was doing like a 45 minute meditation, working on these skills, plus other kinds of exercises to work on these skills every day. And I would say that that took between four to six months to make a connection with that guide. And that was about two years ago. And I'm still working on that connection because it's just like um, every relationship, it takes consistent work. And you know, we haven't known each other that long. Well, he, I, I call him a he, even though you know, they don't really have genders, um, but he has a masculine energy in my perception. 
he's known me, but I haven't known him that long. So we're still working on this relationship. We still need to get closer and learn how each other um, communicate. And it takes, it takes consistent work. There's another guide I have um, that I'm just getting to know now. And it has taken me about the same amount of time, about four or five months, to start getting some clear communication from this guide. Um, so yeah, with consistent work, four to six months is a pretty, um, I think that that's pretty doable for most people if you're really consistently working on it. What are my favorite herbs for a spiritual bath? Thank you for asking. I'm glad you brought this up because we were talking about spiritual baths last time and that was one of the things I wanted to address because someone had some additional um, questions about those baths. So I do want to take a minute to talk about those. One of my favorite herbs to use for a spiritual bath is rue. Rue is really, really potent and powerful for removing energetic connections and energies that need to be removed. Unwanted energies, unwanted connections. It's uh, in many traditions, it's believed to be the, the most powerful, if not the only herb that can actually remove an unwanted, um, unwanted spiritual connection. So Rue is one of my favorites, especially when I feel like I really need that powerful um, action. If I feel like there has been a spirit or entity or an energy around me that I want to make sure I make a clean cut from. Um, now Rue is poisonous, so you have to be careful. You can't use, I mean, you'd have to use massive amounts of it in your bath in order for it to poison you, but still be careful and don't use massive amounts and don't ever drink it. Um, I would say, I don't always do a lot of really precise measuring with my spiritual baths. I kind of just know by eye, um, how much to use. I mean, I have some formulas that I, that I do, you know, measure very precisely, but when I'm just throwing things together for myself, it's not always necessarily to do that. So with Rue, I'm thinking about a quarter cup to a half cup of dried herb, um, in to one of those big stock pots of water and you would just boil it until it becomes like a really strong tea and then you know turn it down after it comes to a, a rolling boil and let it simmer for quite a while until it becomes a really strong tea and then strain it out and pour it into your bath water obviously you want to make sure you're not getting into boiling hot bath water so be careful of that and actually, um, for a spiritual bath, it's traditional to use like room temperature water, so it doesn't always need to be really hot. Now, sometimes I prefer to do a really hot bath. That works well for me. Not specifically with the roux, I would do that room temperature, but with something where I'm really, um, like hot water is detoxifying. So if I wanna work on this on all levels, like on a physical level as well as mental and, and spiritual level, then sometimes I wanna use really hot water. And my favorite ingredients for that would be uh, kosher sea salt and Florida water. You can do either one of those alone or you can do them together. So for the Florida water, just a few sprinkles is enough. And I recommend that you try to get your hands on some really well-made Florida water with natural ingredients because the stuff that is, that is commonly so, so, sold is um, it's cologne, right? So it's alcohol-based and it has a lot of chemicals in it. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It does work. <laughs> I do use it for some things. But if you're going to be taking a lot of baths, it may not be good to be bathing in a lot of chemicals, right? So there's a lot of um, people who make great Florida waters out there. Anyway, you just need a few sprinkles of Florida water, um, like two tablespoons at the most. And you can do that alone or you can combine it with the sea salt. And if you're gonna be using sea salt, then a quarter cup or... Okay, we're back. We paused due to um, connection troubles, so we may have blacked out for a moment. I was talking about the sea salt for the bath. If you're going to use sea salt in your bath, then a quarter cup or a half cup is enough. A half cup is plenty, but if you really want you know, a strong bath, then a half cup is good. Um, 
the reason reason we use the kosher salt is because it is blessed by a rabbi everything kosher goes through um, has a process of ritual associated with it so um, that makes it you know more powerful um, and then the other bath that I like to recommend, recommend I talked about last time and it's a citrus bath citrus sea salt and I'm glad we're going through over this again because someone had asked about the specific recipes. Um, so for a citrus sea salt bath, again, it's not really a specific recipe, but use as many lemons and limes as you can get your hands on. I have also used oranges in the past. Um, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. And use a, a citrus press and squeeze those fresh citrus fruits right into your bath water. Squeeze as many as possible, at least five. You know, um, you want a good amount, um, but more if you can do it. And you kind of want to get a good balance because if you have too much citrus in your bath, you are going to get sticky. Um, in that case, you can rinse out in the shower afterwards. But if you get the right balance, you won't have to rinse off afterwards. And traditionally, it's best to let this dry on your skin. So my absolute favorite is the citrus, and I do like to add sea salt to that citrus bath as well. And I do add about a quarter cup, maybe more, somewhere between a quarter cup and a half cup. So those are my favorite baths. Um, last time I also mentioned that if you want to make like a road opener or blockbuster bath for yourself to remove blockages or obstacles and really kind of um, open up your path to a fresh new start, I do recommend using coffee. You can use dried coffee grounds, a half cup to a huge, to one of those big um, stock pots. And if you want to add some other stuff to that, I recommend roux. You can, you can use the quantities of roux that I already mentioned, or you can use half and half equal parts of coffee and roux in a big stock pot, simmer it for a, bring it to a boil, simmer it for a long time, get a nice strong brew, strain it, add it to your bath water. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving week. Oh, you're shopping for groceries and listening. That's so nice. Yeah, I do money and prosperity candle services for sure. I have a mini money service that's only $30. It doesn't come with a um, custom petition. It's just to overall offer you blessings and good luck in the areas of finance and money. And the reason I make it so affordable is because when people are having money troubles, they need something affordable. So I like to keep some really affordable, approachable things around for people um, when they are in need of some good luck for money, prosperity, or abundance. If you have specific questions about money, prosperity, and abundance candle work, like doing it on your own, let me know and I'm happy to answer those questions.